In the newspaper business, and this is one of the things I like about it, uh, at least certainly at that time, was very unpretentious. I mean, many of the people I worked with didn't have, well, most of them, I would say, had college degrees. Um, but being from Princeton was something you wanted to live down because people thought you were snooty or that you uh, were from some rarefied environment. Mm -hmm. And um, many of the people I worked with were, I mean, you know, there was a guy who kept a gun in his desk drawer and people kept bottles of whiskey. And it was really an old-time newspaper. It was like right out of the front page, mm -hmm. So, which is what I liked about it. Um, I was, um, a couple of years ago, I was asked to moderate a panel at sort of at the last minute I was supposed to be a panelist at Princeton and uh, the moderator had to um, excuse herself because her mother was ill and she's a woman and of course she was going to take care of mom because that's what we women do. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me if I would take on the moderating role, which I of course said I would and um, I hadn't, I really was unprepared, I had very little notice, so I thought I'd better go to the room early and kind of see what the setup is and prepare myself. Mm -hmm. And I got into this room, and so I, the previous panel uh, was still talking, and I sat down in the back of the room and I listened, and it was a panel of attorneys. And this was a, a reunion of Princeton women alums. So it was all women, and uh, this was a panel of women lawyers. and. It was amazing. Every single one of these lawyers had blue chip degrees. They had graduated from Princeton. Obviously, that's why they were there. They had these terrific uh, law school degrees. And every single one of them had worked for a major, major law firm. Mm -hmm. And every single one of them had left. Um, and they all had good jobs. You know, one was the dean of the law school somewhere. Another was, uh, you know, had her own business. And But they had all chosen to get off that path because it was untenable for them. Right. And, um, and they admitted and acknowledged that in so doing, they prolonged the agony because you really need to get a critical mass of women into leadership positions. And I think in some ways, you know, when I became the bureau chief of the Houston Post, it wasn't a job I sought. And it wasn't a job I particularly wanted. I didn't really want to be a manager. You know, I wanted to be a columnist or something. But mm -hmm. I felt I could not say no because I felt an obligation as a woman, as a pioneer, to take that job and to do a good job so that somebody else mm -hmm. could come after me and do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a big motivation uh, for women of my cohort, that we feel we must take on this role. Yeah, well, I, I joked with a friend of mine. I said, you know, the problem with people my age is that first we were too young, and then we were too old. <laughs> um, because when we were young, it was, um, you know, it was not open to young people. But the disruption that technology has created in the, in the news business has created opportunities. And then, as you say, I think um, the trails that we blazed and the fact that there are people like me mm -hmm. to mentor young women and young men mm -hmm. uh, makes a difference.